uh, Galatians 6 and 8. Uh, sowing and reaping. Yeah, right. right? So if you, uh, uh, God is not mocked. Uh, uh, that which you sow, you shall also reap. If you reap unto the, uh, uh, the, to the flesh, it'll be corruption. If you reap unto the spirit, it'll be life everlasting. So it's consequences for your actions. Whether good or bad. If you do something good, there might be a, there probably is a good consequence. If you do something bad, there's a bad consequence. God don't have to come down and get you. It's just the course of nature. If you do something bad, if you murder somebody, you're either going to go to jail or the, the people you murdered, their people are going to come murder you. That's the consequences of your actions. Right? And so, so look at this. And Moses took the blood and look at verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning what? All these words, right? So now, even the Old Testament started with this bloodshed of the auction, of this auction, right? So the Old Testament doesn't even start at Genesis. Why? Because the testament must need blood and the death of the testator. That's what this is talking about. Right? Go back to Hebrews 9. Go ahead. You want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. So why do people put us under a new covenant when we're not part of the old? They say the body is Christ. Yeah, but and, and, and that comes with the, just rightly dividing. So you have to understand a covenant is an agreement between two parties. Okay? Uh, that we, we make natural covenants all the time. Uh, and so what happens is God made a covenant with his people Israel. He's going to make a new covenant with them. Right? So anybody who wasn't under the old is not under the new. If when you add somebody to a covenant, now it becomes void. Okay? And so, and most people, when you don't rightly divide the scriptures, that's why it says rightly divide the word of truth. There are some things that, was, that, was, that are, is mentioned in the Bible over here is not necessarily talking to you. It's for your learning. Okay? So you have to understand what parts of the Bible is God directly talking to you, and you understand that based on the dispensation in which you live. We're not under the dispensation of the law. So the things taught back here is for your learning. It's not for you to obey. Okay? It's for your learning. Now, are there principles back here that we can take today? Yes. Absolutely. Right? But principles are different than doctrine itself. Right? The principles back here love your mother and your father. That is a principle throughout the Bible, right? Which was given out, out here, right? So understand that there's principles back here, but this is for your learning. If God dealt with Israel like this, and he made promises and kept it with them, then surely he'll do the same with us, right? Look at Hebrews 9. Verse 10. Look at uh, Hebrews 9, look at verse 19. Oh, uh, no. Verse 21. We read those. Verse 21. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with what? Blood. Now, notice it says almost all things. There were some things that were purged and sanctified by water. Right? We'll get to those verses next week. I'll, I'll go back through that. Uh, look at uh, verse 22. Law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no what? There is no remission, right? If there's no bloodshed, there is no remission. Look at verse 23. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. Because remember, God spoke to Moses and said, do these things after the pattern that I what? Give you. Okay? So all of these things back here, the tabernacle, the building of the tabernacle, the law, all of these things that Moses built it back here, was a what? A pattern of the things which were in heaven. So all of the things back here for the nation of Israel was a figure, a shadow, a pattern of what they should have saw in Christ. You see that? But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. The heavenly things have pure, uh, uh, perfect sacrifices. Jesus was, Jesus was pure, perfect. So the sacrifice that he made, he didn't need to do it yearly as the priests did back here, they had to do it yearly because they were still sinful themselves. But he had no sin, so it, it only took one. So the, 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 the priest going in once a year to offer sacrifices upon the people was a representation or a pattern of Christ. 
Because he's going to be their high priest. He offered the ultimate sacrifice. He went into the holies of holies and on the mercy seat and shed his blood. They did it yearly as a what? As a pattern. Which when Christ came, they should have accepted it. Because all of these patterns point to him. See that? Look at verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. And we talked about it the other week. Why couldn't Mary touch him, but Thomas could? After. He had not ascended yet. He had not ascended to the Father. And that's why he said, you can't touch me right now. Because remember now, the lamb that went to the mercy seat of the altar had to be without what? Amen. Without spot and without blemish. Amen. So if she touched him, he would have been with, with spot and with blemish. So he said, you can't touch me right now. So when he went and offered his blood, because remember now, when he died, he didn't go to heaven. He went down, right? And so when he resurrected, she had to, it was really in the night, she would have had to see him as soon as he got up. Right? And so, but she couldn't touch him at that time. And that's what this is saying here. He is not entered into the holy places made with hands, but into the heavenly places. Just like they had to go to the mercy seat, which was in the tabernacle made with hands, he went to the mercy seat, which was in the heavens. The same thing that they did uh, down here was, was done in heaven. Okay? We'll pick this up uh, next week. Look at verse 25. We'll just read this all the way through. I'll come back and, and go through it Wednesday. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place, what? Every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of who? Of himself. They came in to take away the sins of Israel every year. But Christ only had to do it what? One time. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto what? Salvation. Unto salvation. Out here. Okay? Any questions? We'll pick this up. I'll pick it up and go start back from verse 22 and explain to you uh, all those things on Wednesday. Any questions? observations all right let us pray father god we thank you now for your grace and your mercy uh, we thank you for your understanding we thank you for your guidance uh god we just thank you right now for those who are here who thought it not robbery to be with here with us today uh, we ask that you open up their minds oh god and uh, uh help them to receive your word with with, re with all readiness of mind and help them to study out these things whether they be so or not father god we ask for that you just <clears throat> help us to understand your will oh god uh, help us not to conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of the mind that we may know and prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Help us to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Father God, help us to be content in every situation we're in. Father God, help us to understand <clears throat> the, uh, the situations around us, oh God. Help us to uh, be aware of the things around us, oh God. We're living in an evil and present day. But Father God, give us strength to stand uh, and withstand the wiles of the devil. Uh, you've given us the equipment. You've given us the armor of God. Help us to take on the armor of God so that we may be able to stand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.